Good evening and welcome back to the Australian Stock Market Show. My quote for tonight comes from US futurist Joel Barker, who said, vision without action is merely a dream. Action without vision just passes the time. Vision with action can change the world. We know you all have a vision of the future you would like to create. Some of you are taking action whilst others don't know where to start. Our aim is to help you take more action so you achieve your vision. As we give you our upfront, no BS approach to all things stock market. For our main topic tonight, we take a look at whether selling stocks before 30 June is wise and where you should look to invest in the second half of 2022. Stay tuned as Dale and I get into that and plenty more. Hello, I'm Janine Cox, your host for tonight, and joining me is Dale Gillam, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Hello. Hello. How are you going? I'm good. I'm, now, we're, now we're live. We had a, YouTube had a little glitchy technical problem that made us late. I don't like being late. I know you don't. You're very particular. I know. I'm very anal about that, aren't I? <laughs> you are. <laughs> what? Interest rate rising again. What was it? Five, half, half a percent? Half a percent. Mm -hmm. Like, holy samole, that, that was like a mountain that went up. Yeah, well, we're going to be talking about that when we look at the market tonight. Oh, are we? Just oh, briefly. So I'm giving everybody a heads up about you what are. we're going to talk about, so I should shut up. You should. Okay. I got, I got in early at the start of the show already. I know you did, didn't <clears> you? I mean, oh, geez. oh, like, what can I do? Then change the subject to how cold it is in Melbourne right now? Look, everybody knows that <clears throat> around Australia right now. They're all laughing at us in Queensland, I think. I know, but hey, it was beautiful. We had a beautiful autumn anyway. But let's get on with the show. How's that? Before I drag it to some place we don't need it to be all right now. Before we get into our first segment tonight, again, we're going to take some live calls on the show. So if you do want to chat to Janine and I and ask us a question, then this is your opportunity to pick up. Your phone and call us now. The number you need to dial is 03-9290-9988. That's 03 for Melbourne, 9290-9988. Now, to get things started, the first person to call into the show right now will get a free copy of my latest book, Accelerate Your Wealth. It's your money, your choice. Now, Janine and I are super keen to chat to you, so make sure you pick up your phone now and get dialing. While we wait for you to call, it is the first Tuesday in the month, and this means we take a look at the Australian stock market. So let's get into the charts. On your screen right now is an All Ordinaries Index chart. That's not the one I use anyway. Mm, it's not the one you use. I just couldn't see the point in, while well, you know, trying to switch from one workbook to another and, okay. and being a bit nervous about that when I can have it all in the one workbook. Well, you it's go nice and do whatever you like. So you give them your opinion on the All Lords and I'll <laughs> shut up because I told them all yesterday. <laughs> Did you? All right. Now, look, it's what's really interesting mm. right now is this half a percent mm. um, interest rate increase that we've seen, isn't yes. it? So we know that the market's been talking about it for months now. And it's been telegraphing it for a year or something, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, and they were talking about... People were bandering about 0.4, I think, weren't they? Saying yeah, it was 0.4. About 0.4. So, you know, what's a 0.1% more? The RBA probably thought it's nice and close to that number. Um, but, yeah. you know, I don't see um, that it's a huge deal at the moment. I think that it's just a, a steady sort of an increase that they're making right now. And I don't really understand it. I mean, mm. we put it up last month. So why don't you just put it up 0.75 last month? Well, look, they don't, they don't want to shock the market. That's the whole well, point the of doing it gradually. Well, the market interest rate. The market already knows there's going to be four to five interest rate rises. The market already knows the interest rates are probably going to be around 3.5% by the end of the year. Mm. So let's just get on with it. Do you honestly think that they'll do it that quickly? Well, I don't know, but what's the, what's, what's the harm in doing something like that? Do you really think they'll go that mm. high with the interest yeah, rates? Yeah, quite, quite. I mean, that's pretty normal. Right now we're very abnormal mm. interest rates. But we all know, I mean, I've been doing CanStar... Um, can, can, is it Canstar? Yeah, yeah Canstar Can one. Survey every single month for the last couple of years on interest rates. And every single expert's been saying they're going to go up. They're going to go up. And they were saying they're going to go up by mid this year. Mm. And they're already going up. So what's the surprise? Oh, this is, I'm like, let's rip the band-aid off. If you've mm. got a problem, just put it up. And then see how we go. But what's the whole little inchy, inchy bits? Look, I'm sure that there are a lot of people sitting out there tonight that have a mortgage that disagree with you. 
probably do, but that's okay. <laughs> but that is okay. But again, you know, you know, when you have a mortgage, you factor all that sort of stuff in. Because you should be factoring in what's normal interest rates. No, well, hang on a minute. The banks factor that in, but do you well, really do. think that the average person factors that in? They may not because they're just working working hard. Well, they should. Saving, getting their mortgage paid mm -hmm. off, you um, know, looking after family. They don't necessarily think, well, I better factor in another 2 or 3%. Of course they should. So how, how much further do you think it's going to go up this year? Well, I mean, as I said, I'm expecting three to three and a half percent by the end of the year in that sort of bracket. Mm. And you know, I hope I'm wrong. I really do. But that's still pretty low. Mm. You know, you know, normal interest rates are higher than that. OK. But we need to talk about the all odds. We do. And look, I mean, we're looking at the chart here just to have a, a get an idea. Now, mm. we did say that, that the market could find support where it mm. is at the moment, didn't we? Correct. Or it could fall slightly mm. lower. Now, there was a bit, little bit of a sell-off towards the end of today, yep. um, but it wasn't a you know, hugely negative issue. It's just a normal move on the market, really. Yep. So what's your take on the market? Look, my take on the market is that it's more or less factored in this current rise. I'm not necessarily suggesting that it's factored in all of those increases. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm, um, I'm thinking that there is a potential for the market to go up until it tells us otherwise. So mm. we just really have to wait. It's no point prejudging um, and thinking that, okay, it's going to keep falling. What's the point in doing that, really? Mm. I mean, there is none. No, so not. it's about just saying, okay, well, what's that mean to us? Well, it just means that we may not be buying additional stocks for a little while. That's all. We've just got to be, okay. wait and be patient. We've seen so many stocks fall between 20 and 40% recently. So it means big opportunities coming up for those who are really patient about it. Okay. So that's your take on the all odds. If they mm -hmm. want my take, they can watch yesterday's video. And did you say something similar? No. Okay. They have to watch it to figure it out. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> You're cheeky. Okay, that is it for our thoughts on the Australian market. Now it's time to get into our first email for the night. Alrighty, our first email question is from Jordan. He says, should I invest in South 32 stocks? They seem to be doing okay. Cheers, Jordan. Jordan. So let's go and have a look at um, this Jordan. Yeah, now I've bought South mm -hmm. 32 up with the monthly chart first because obviously we have a good look at what's going on in the monthly time frame and and the, the shorter time frame. But from a longer term perspective, it still looks bullish. It's mm. Until it tells you otherwise, you have to believe that it's more likely to continue going up. What would you say? Look, I don't disagree with you. I, I like this stock. I think it's doing quite well. It's had a bit of a breather more recently in the last, well, since probably the last two or three months, but it is now on the rise. It had a big, strong rise over the last couple of weeks. Um, so it's probably just having a breather this week, but I do like it. So I what really if do. it goes below that low of 476? What, that's last week's bar? That's what would last you think? week's bar. Yeah. I'd start changing my mind. Yeah, okay. That's for sure. Definitely mm. start changing my mind. But right now we've had nice two or three weeks up, some nice strong moves. It was one of those top stocks last week in moves in the top 100. So, And the angle of that rise is really nice, isn't it? But this could be a false rally too. Mm. It really could be a false rally right up and it may, you know, get up to that near that top, find some resistance and then come back down again. So, mm. okay. but I do like it. I think it's a good stock for him. Okay, great. I'm not telling him to buy it, but I just think it's a good stock. I mm. understand. Mm. All right. Well, we have a call on the line, Janine. Uh, do we have Kevin on the line? No. Hi. Hello. 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 Here you going, matey? Good. Kevin, where are you from? Hello. Hello, Kevin. Where are you from, mate? Right, I'm from uh, Bry Hill in the northern suburbs of Melbourne. Fantastic. And what's your question I'm, for us today, mate? Northern suburbs. And what's your question, Kevin? Okay, my first question, my burning question, is why doesn't it happen? Okay, about staff. Huh? Sorry, I missed that question. Sorry, I think we've... we've... Hello, are you there? Yeah, there you are. Sorry, I've just missed your question, mate. Yeah, I thought, let's get on. I know we're going to talk about a stock called SPL. That's what he was asking about. He seemed about, quite he excited got, about it. He did get excited. He was excited, excited to talk to you. I know. This is a system. We've, we've got a whole new system coming, but it's taken two months for us to come to get our 
phone system. That's just fixed. the reality of things at the moment, isn't oh, it? Well, actually, it's been more than two months, nearly three months, actually, mm. we've been trying to get a new system. But um, well, anyway, but let's talk about Holdings. SPL. I'm sorry, mate, we couldn't get your question fully, but let's have a look at it. Yeah, look, Star Farmer Holdings has actually been in a steady decline for some time. Mm -hmm. It's quite a volatile little stock. We can see, though, that it just keeps on trying to make higher highs and then it just gets wiped out again. Mm. Uh, it's almost back down to that low in March 2020, which is unbelievable. I mean, there's, how many stocks have fallen back to those lows? Well, yeah, there's not a lot, is there? You know, it, it, I mean, obviously this is, you know, Star Pharma Holdings, you know, which is the stock ticket got SPL. It's quite volatile, isn't it? Mm. Uh, and we don't know whether he owns or he doesn't own or whether he's looking to buy it. But, well, I mean, to me, right at this point in time, it's well, if, going if down. If you didn't own it, you wouldn't be looking to buy it. Well, correct. And I if you were holding it, you'd really want to make sure that you had sort of a line in the sand as to what mm -hmm. you were going to do with it, wouldn't you? Well, you would. And that's the point is, is we're seeing this stock. It's been falling really, really heavily since that high back there in February 2021. It's had Look a massive Look at the angle, mass like how it's it's slowing right down. It's, it's becoming almost parabolic. Look, yeah, just the... Right. Um, See this shape? You can take over the thing. Yeah. It's just a, almost slowing right down. See how that, and Yeah, the, the answer the, what I was going to show how the angle is slowing because yeah, we show how it speeds up. It. We show we often show how the, the momentum goes, goes on an uptrend, but we don't show how it actually does the opposite on a downtrend, do we? Mm. How it actually slows down. Uh, and so we're getting that. So that's what I was getting at is it is slowing down a little bit. So if it goes up for a few weeks, it could indicate that it's it's going to turn around here, could it? It's possible, but you get that here. You had a few weeks up and then went mm. down, a few weeks up and then went down again. But at the moment, this is in a downtrend and there's something I'd stay away from until it starts to tell me it's much better. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Dale. And thank you for that question. Our next email is from Ben. G'day, guys. First of all, I would just like to say a big thank you to you two. I've read both your books, Dale, and have been a religious listener to your show over the past six months. I have been very strict with my stop losses, and by doing that, it's saved me massively. I would be a lot poorer if it wasn't for you. My question tonight is on aristocrat leisure. Looking at the monthly chart, they have just had a nice pullback recently, like that one in 2018. And again, in 2020, they seem to have found some support. I know it's a bit early yet, but would love to know your analysis. Cheers, Ben, number one fan. There you go. Oh, he's one. Oh, he's <laughs> You've got a one. number one fan. No, I think he's a fan of both of us, oh, not okay. just me. You know, so, you know, yes, I'm on both YouTube shows, but I think... You take the cake. You, oh, got, you, you had the best comments. You're just being nice to me tonight, aren't you? I am being nice to you. I just feel you... uncomfortable about that. I know, but I mean, within pump, punching distance, yeah, yeah. I'm being nice to you. So let's have a uh, look at aristocrat. Aristocrat leisure. Okay. So what are you thinking? Look, I'm really quite interested in it at yeah. the moment, but I'm not convinced at this stage that the low is in. Um, it's still pointing down strongly for me, so I'm just waiting. Yeah. So you can show them on the chart. What do you want me to show them? Well, what are you talking about? Oh, what, what do you what? think we bring a chart up for? Just for good looks? What, what, what can I show them? <laughs> <laughs> You're a charting expert. You're telling me what can you show them? Okay. So, You're one of Australia's best charting experts. <laughs> so we've got the angle of this line coming down here yeah. at the moment, and it's still trying to push up each time it, it tries to so it keeps bumping recover, its but keeps bumping it he its head. So that's wh why I'm not completely convinced. And if it took out these lows here in 2021, then it could be quite a concern in terms of how far this thing could come back. But it looks like it's slowing at the moment. It does look like it's slowing at the moment, but I mean, obviously with the market moving up over a couple of weeks, it's you know, had a little bit of a, a go there, but the last last week it was a bit bearish. So we'll see what happens when it starts to test this low, hey? Mm. So, but right now it's probably a little bit too stock. early. But good, but I mean, you know, it's nice for list. your number one fan that you actually give him something more. <laughs> like, geez, he took the time to ride in. Look, I think, he's, I think he's got a good stock choice, that's for sure. It's he just does. about timing though, isn't it, for this one? It really is important. about timing at the moment. It's a little mm. bit too early, but now we've got another email. This one is from Terry who says, Dear Dale and Janine, Looking at the mess Europe is in with the war in the Ukraine, Ukraine exports over 80% of Africa's wheat and grains and also a lot of smaller countries. Um, America is stockpiling and China is doing the same. The world is looking to countries like Australia, Canada and the US to pick up the shortfall. 
This is true for corn as well, which brings me to the question, why has Grain Corp dropped marginally and not surged ahead? Um, it would seem to me that with troubled times ahead, would be it would be surging. Great show, Terry. I think Grain Corp went up well yesterday, didn't it? Yeah, look, um, it's just... But besides really that. nice from a, a medium to long term trend, but it has had a really checkered history. But this is really more about the fact that commodities have been booming. They have been, and it was, mm. has been booming for quite some time. I mean, obviously, Grain Corp has been moving really, really well. I mean, looking at the chart, which send you can continue not to want to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but looking at the chart, it's really, really sort of you know taking off like a rocket. So, uh, look, I think he's, you know, you. you He's looking into the fundamentals, you know, world economics and everything, or what's going on in the world. But really, is what's going on in the UK, in the Ukraine with the Russian war and all those sorts of stuff, is that such a huge big issue about, you know, what grains are, you know, they're looking for Australia to supply more grains to around the world, whether it's barley or wheat or whatever else. But farmers just don't change just like that on a dime. It takes them years well, to change Well, I was watching some of the information. I think it was Landline mm. or the ABC during the week, and they're talking about the fact that there's a mm. lot more greenery in Queensland now. There's a lot of areas that are still really uh, mm. badly affected by the drought, but it does look like it's changing, so there is hope mm. there. But how far off is all of that? You know, that's but, the, Yeah, correct. You know, if, you've, mm. if you've got a wheat farm... How do you, you can't just automatically plant double that mm. if you've got a wheat farm. But if you don't have a wheat farm and you've got something else that's not doing as well and you know you can make a lot more money out of wheat, how do you turn your farm into a wheat farm? And that takes time. Mm. That takes a lot of time, maybe different equipment, all sorts of other stuff. Agreed. Now, Grain Corp is not a farmer. It is obviously, it buys Mm. grains and everything else from the farmer. So this is not something like you just turn on a tap and give Look, you Look, I think it's trending beautifully and you'd stay with it. If it, mm. if you're in it, you'd just stay with it until yeah, it tells you it otherwise. But if it took out this low here, yep. okay, I'd probably be a bit more concerned about it coming back mm. further. Yep. Pro so provided I. it just keeps pushing up, it's more likely to keep going Yeah, up. but it's not going to go ballistic. That's what I'm no, saying. No, not now because it's a lot of it's been factored it's in. It's all been factored in. Mm. All right. Well, Janine, I think it's time that we actually get into our topic for tonight, which I know everyone is on the edge of their seats wanting us to investigate, and that is selling stocks before the 30th of June. Now, what's more exciting is that Janine and I will look at where to invest your money in the second half of 2022. Dale, I can't believe we are fast approaching the end of the financial year and time really seems to be flying. <laughs> yeah, I agree. The world just seems to be moving faster and faster as each year passes. And there's so much going on around us at the moment that uh, it can be distracting, which means we may not always be thinking of what is really, really important to us. That is very true. Now, given that um, the time of year, and some of you may have received emails from your broker reminding you that 30 June is fast approaching and suggesting it may be time to sell stocks in loss to offset capital gains. Now, I do understand that and tax time is a great time to look at your portfolio to see if you need a bit of a cleanup. A stock that has fallen heavily is West Farmers and this surprised me because it's such a great company. Some of you may be in a loss on this one or other stocks. Perhaps you're looking to exit want to know whether this would be a smart move. This is why having a discussion on this subject is so important right now. Mm, that's great advice, Janine. Just because some people are talking about selling before 30th, 30th of June doesn't mean that you should be doing that. Well, thank you for that. It's very true. Dale, and why tonight we will discuss this and whether it's a good practice to sell your stocks just to minimise your tax. We also want to help our viewers to get their portfolio ready for the next financial mm. year. This really is perfect timing as this year we have seen many good stocks fall significantly. We've also seen good growth in a number of stocks in a couple of sectors such as energy which is up over 30% and utilities up by around 18%. On top of that, we've seen big falls in sectors such as Infotech down over 30% and the consumer discretionary sectors down over 18%. So if you're sitting there watching this show with stocks in loss and more importantly, you can admit that you probably should have sold, this is all the more reason to really tune in to what we will share tonight. Mm, you know, what I know, Janine, is that many who receive emails from their brokers asking if they're planning on selling before 30th of June don't know what to do. Now, I think my views on brokers is pretty well known and telling people they need to think about selling to offset capital gains. Well, 
That just annoys me, mm. as I've never ever believed in buying or selling shares for tax reasons. Using proper rules to buy and sell is the only consideration, and this means I make the decisions any time of the year. Mm. I like seeing you annoyed. You know that. Mm. I, know. I thought you were going to tell me off before for talking too much. That's annoying me. <laughs> anyway, um, that's that's going to annoy you a lot of the time, isn't it? I know. Well, that is nice to know I annoy you a lot of the time. But think about it. Now, taking tax advice from a broker is about the same to me as taking market advice or stock market advice from your accountant. Now, we need to remember that a broker's role is to get you to transact. Your role is to understand what you are doing. Your accountant is qualified to help you with your tax return and provide taxation advice. It's not their role to advise you whether you should be selling particular shares. They are not portfolio managers, nor are they traders. Exactly. So it is good practice to sell your shares. So is it good practice, I should say, to sell your shares just to minimise tax? Well, I think everybody knows by now that we don't believe this is the right approach. Mm -hmm. Now, Janine... Mm, you're going to give me a talking How to about now? we share two questions that everyone can ask themselves when preparing for the end of the financial year? Mm -hmm. You ready for it? Great. Are they, I'm just going to have a guess, mm. are they how much tax will I have to pay or better still, how big is my refund going to be? Mm -mm. Close, but no prizes, no <laughs> keepy doll for you. Okay. It's not those questions though. You will know the answers to those when you look at your tax return at the end of the year. Mm, thank you. Well, that's my pleasure. So go and see your account. But question number one is, do you have a proper portfolio strategy with rules to both buy and sell? Now, having rules gives you the clarity as to when and how you make decisions about your portfolio. Now, question number two is, what should I do if any of my stocks are close to my sell signal? Mm -hmm. Further to point one. Having a strategy to buy and sell removes uncertainty and gives you clarity about what decisions you need to make and when you need to make them. With point two, if a stock you own is close to triggering one of your rules to sell, the next step is that you would have to consider whether the downside risk is acceptable. What I mean here is at what level would you no longer be able to justify holding if the price was to fall further? Mm, great advice, Janine. Now, whilst not specifically tax or tax time question, but in a, in a really similar vein, I will say that it's also wise to calculate the benefit of holding a stock past 12 months and receiving that 50% capital gains tax exemption. I will say, Dale, that being able to answer these questions and have a clear plan can really take out the stress of tax time. We believe the most important thing an investor can do is have a strategy, and every decision comes from your strategy. Okay. You won't get an argument from me on that one. <laughs> we constantly say that you shouldn't just sell a stock because it has fallen and we do not sell or buy just for tax reasons. Without proper analysis and a plan, decisions are made blindly and this can cost you thousands or indeed much more. Now, who's on their high horse? <laughs> I know it annoys you when people make poor decisions without doing proper research. Now, when they should be taking the time to ask the questions and learn how to do things properly. I think it's time we talked about something else now before you ask your accountant any questions. And this one's for you too, Dale. You do love a chat and your wife's not going to be happy if you run up the bill chatting to your accountant. Been there, done that, <laughs> several times. Yeah, did you know there is a great resource available to everyone for free that helps us understand tax and the consequences of selling shares. And it's all there on the ATO website. Who'd have thought that the tax man or tax woman is your best friend and there is a truckload of great information on this site so let's have a look mm -hmm. so there's a taxation website so ato.gov.au yep so do you get excited when you think of going to the ato website well it's like i look i get so much as excited <laughs> like getting an enema <laughs> Okay, so if we look here, we can even see information about shares and similar investments, yep. understanding your capital gains. There are just low, truckloads of information. You know, one of the areas mm -hmm. that people often get confused about are those corporate actions on this and how to treat they those. Yep. Well, the ATO has a heap of information on that. You can see down the like left-hand the the side, and side. <laughs> yeah. yep. capital gains tax, right? This is the area I'm looking at. So mm -hmm. it says home individuals, capital gains tax. And do you want to zoom mm -hmm. in for me? How do I zoom in? <laughs> All right. Zoom in up here, I think. Zoom, zoom. 
There you go. Look at that. I okay, can zoom fantastic. in. Fantastic. There you go. My, You're see, great. I had this man in my ear telling Everybody me Everybody was things. out there thinking, oh, geez, Janine, we can't see that. Yeah. Um, so capital gains tax, and then you go down the left and you can see a whole lot of information. Then you see shares and similar investments. And there is a truckload of information under there like when you can claim losses on shares and units, share buybacks, yeah. dividend reinvestment plans, demergers, rollovers, um, in, even inherited assets. That might be something that's important. It is Remember, very, I keep very important. trying to offer you shares all the time, don't I? Yes, you do. And then you'll say, you keep telling me you'll sell them. Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good at that sort of yeah. stuff. But it's really great information. I know to me, it's so many people, just before we move on, they, they worry about paying tax. And, yeah. and I often say to people, if I went to the tax man, you know, and I had to pay a million dollars in tax, I'm going to them with a bottle of champagne and flowers because if I've paid a million dollars in tax, I've made a shed load of money. Mm. So why worry about how much you're paying? My job is to minimise my tax and give, and to do that, I give my accountant a headache mm -hmm. um, by trying to make as much money as I like. But trying to do things for tax reason mm, okay. doesn't get me. No. But anyway, let's move on. Now let's have a look at the charts to really understand what happens when shares are falling around tax time. And then we will take a quick look at a couple of the most promising sectors for the second half of 2022. Okay, so now we've got to bring up Optima. So there we go. All right. Our sectors, we love looking at those, don't we? We do. Now we've got, um, mm. obviously, um, this is the leaderboard. So if I go and have a look so here, we've the got yearly the year. Results. Yep. So this is the yearly data. Yep. Now, um, energy is obviously at the top. So we said last year that we thought energy and utilities were likely to yep. be the better sectors. So that's up 27.61. Which they have. And yep. now this year we're looking at, so this is a good exercise to do around tax time, just to have a think about for the next financial year, where are we headed and what, what, can, we, what can we look at, that are, where are the best opportunities likely to be? So this is why we think that this pullback that we're seeing on the market is actually a really good thing I because it. it's setting up opportunity. Um, we've already seen information technology down over 30%, as you can see on the chart there. Um, that's at the bottom of the list. So we're it, normally, we'd be excited about the top of the list, but mm. we're actually looking from bottom up. Well, it's we? like a pendulum. The pendulum moves to look to its extreme, and then it comes back the other way again. Yeah, let me make it mm. easier for you. Okay. Is that easier on your eyes? No, doesn't make any difference <laughs> to me. It's just upside down. So, but, okay, so but it is. It's like money flows into a sector till it gets mm. too expensive, or that it's fully valued. Then it starts flowing into sectors that are undervalued. Right. And then it moves back again, and it and because they become fully valued or overvalued, and then it goes back to the ones that are undervalued. Fine. That's what I'm saying. That's my pendulum analogy. Okay, that, that's a really good that's analogy. That's a good metaphor. Or do you want me to give you a metaphor five? No, I really like your analogies. Okay. Um, I can make fun about you, make fun of you about that later, can't I? I? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Information tech, as we said, um, mm. it's just got bigger, 30.74% there on the top of the leaders board. That's obviously an area that we're going to be having a look at, and we'll look at a chart yes. in a minute. I was talking about that yesterday, Consumer actually. Consumer discretionary, yes. you know, that's down nearly 20%. Mm. Mm. We've seen... Over in the US, they've been really worried about interest rate increases on yeah. the retail space. And they're not here in Australia. But it's not really having as huge an impact as what they thought it would. And in fact, there are a lot of um, the retailers yeah. that they thought were going to come out with losses have actually come out on the positive side well, in the last... Cause I, I'm just going to ask you a question. Is huger a word, is it? Oh, look, it's just, I was so excited. It just came out. <laughs> Can't help it. I create right. new words all the let's, time. Let's keep going yeah. on and see if you can create more new words, okay? <laughs> All right. And then we've got uh, communication services, all right, mm. down 11.6% there. So another really mm. interesting area. We, we're looking at Telstra. In Telstra. That well, that is Telstra, that section, isn't it? Really? Yeah, but the funny thing, it, wait till you see the chart and you'll think but it's quite different. But there's some good stocks in there like mm. Focus and others. Focus is That are having an heavily. impact on it, yeah. Are, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so healthcare is another one. Yes. And we, we've been, you know, ho hum on healthcare for some time we'll now. We'll talk about CSL later on. Yeah. Um, and so there, there may be some opportunities Cochlear, in there. CSL, ResMed, another one we're going to talk about later on. Yeah, we could talk about those as well. No, we've I got know consumer we are. staples. We are. They tend to be more defensive. They do. I know you're getting excited about that. I know. They tend consumer staples depend. Uh, the more dependable type shares to have in your portfolio over time. They pay a dividend and you get some capital mm. growth, but they tend to be plotters. So they you do. don't expect them to punch the lights out, but you know, once they get trending, they're, they're, they're good, good stock to have. Yeah. But at the moment, it's only four, we're saying 4% down. Woolies has been sold but off heavily. But even financial is only up 1.37% for this year. I mean, seriously. Look, we know that the financial stocks have been sold off. Yes. Um, but I'm not, look, I, I still like financials and materials. Yeah. 
but it's the ones here. Where have we got the best opportunities? Okay. Probably those bottom four or the top four there um, are the ones to. Well, one really thing watch. I, I, I urge people to go and have a look at my report yesterday because I actually talk about the technologies, information technology sector, about how big mm. it is, and, and I'm saying that you know the top five stocks have. I forget what the figure was, but billions of dollars of market cap. But about 80% of the stocks in are only small. So you've got to I pick the right stocks in that sector. All right. Well, well I've got just before we wrap it up, yep. I just want to show quickly sneak these in. Okay. Um, a quick chart of there's the consumer discretionary sector, just to get a real impression wow, of on. how far this has actually been sold off from the high rather than just looking at the yearly. Okay, so that's 26, 27% from the high. Mm. Just to give you an idea of the opportunity and why we're rubbing our hands together here, mm. information technology, because um, eventually things will turn around, the market will adjust itself to what's going on with interest rate rises and everybody will wonder what was all the fuss about. 45% um, fall we've seen on the information technology. Well, what's interesting that I was saying in my report yesterday is this sector's crashed technically crashed twice in the last two years. Mm. Do you know any sector that's crashed in twice in two years? Really? I'm asking you a question, not really. I said, what? do you know any sectors, any other sectors that have crashed twice in two years ever? No. Neither do I. So that, that's what I thought was quite interesting because it did the COVID crash into 2020. Mm -hmm. So if you look, can I have well, the see, mask? I don't consider this a crash, what's happening now. Well, even though... What's a crash? What is a crash anyway? Oh, you tell Gosh. me what a crash is. Okay, come on. Look, a crash is generally something that everybody's panic selling at the end. That's an to emotional me, thing. To me, this is more, the, a yeah. it was a strategic decision. The fund managers looked at the big picture and they said, right, we're in these sectors and we're out of these sectors. Mm -hmm. They started to fall away. To me, that's not a crash. If a stock crashes, how do you call a crash on a 87 stock? 87 was a crash. Correct. The GFC, the um, after the middle of the year in, mm. what was it, 2028? Yeah, crashed. That was a crash because mm. it just gave way and everybody who had to sell was selling. So was COVID a crash? COVID was a crash from the top, which is just odd. Correct. Um, because you just don't see those sort of things happen unless, it, you know, they allow that to happen, which, you know, that's what happened. Um, Correct. But, you know, so I don't consider COVID a crash. I just think that that was but just... What's, but how do, what, is the, what's, what is the criteria for a crash? Well, from our point of view, the market just rolls, starts to roll over as it behaves normally. Mm -hmm. Stocks are being sold off, people, the smart money are getting out, and then eventually a crash is caused by the masses that um, are panic selling at the but end. But that's all wishy-washy Lucy stuff. Well, I could quickly tell you it's it's a zigzag, but then I'd have to draw it. People won't understand what I'm talking about. You're still avoiding it, aren't you? You really can't. <laughs> but what is a crash? So that's the thing, isn't it? That's why everybody's got their own opinion on it, isn't mm -hmm. it? So, but when do they call a market crash? At the bottom. At the bottom, okay. Mm. So we've had these big moves down, the 49% in the COVID low, 40, nearly 45% till recently. If we go back, have a look at this. This thing makes some decent moves down. But if we have to go back 11 years, like I was saying on my report, right back to right over here, back 11 years before we saw a big fall on this, back to 2011, which is another big sort of slowdown on this market, but it fell down 42% from that high there back in, I can't read that, that's in April 2010 down into August 2011. So it had a big fall. So is it repeating that sort of stuff again? Or, well, look, people hmm. will say that you're splitting hairs because, mm -hmm. you know, you were, you were trying to get out of me something that I know what you were trying to do. I know but you're avoiding I, me. Can no, I just okay. have a look at this mouse for a minute? Because when people think about a crash, people were calling a crash recently before, like when the yeah. US was near its top and saying that we're going to have a crash. Correct. Okay? And, and we didn't have it yet. We, and the US has had a, had a um, I guess you would say, the like quite a steady the fall. Crashed. The Nasdaq, but the U.S. market overall US has market just had a quite a steady fall so far. Correct. Okay, so does that mean the crash is still to come for the U.S. market? That's a question. Well, there'll be a crash in the future. <laughs> exactly when is yeah. another debate, but there will it will crash again. But I'm just trying to say, okay, right. what is this? Can we look at this one then that you've pointed out? Yeah. Is that a crash to this low here? Mm, good question. Because the, the market, the, the big players call it a crash when it gets to 20%. So they were calling a crash then. Yeah. But to us, that's just a normal correction that a market has. Mm -hmm. It went up, but this is the abnormal part, the fact that it just pummeled down at the bottom. So the okay. crash is right near the bottom. 
Yeah, and it melted in. So, <laughs> yeah. again, that's what I'm saying is how should people read this when you've seen the market fall 49% back into that COVID low into March 2020. Mm. And now we've got this low down in here, 45% down here. And this could this move here could be just another one of these moves before it falls away again. So there could be further to go. There could be, but you'd have to think that the majority of the fall is finished. Yeah, so the majority, and that's what I quite often, I've said about the All Lords, I think mm -hmm. the majority of the falls happen. I think the majority of the falls happen here on the technology sector. So I think there are, opportunity mm -hmm. but until those big stocks in the technology sector really start to show me some support and that they're moving up i'm probably not going to be in that sector yeah i agree with you you know yeah. we're talking about these sectors because we're saying you know ready and be ready and wait not try to jump the gun um, if we look at communication services, oh, getting off that one I am because you had already looked at that. So <laughs> you were you already pre-versed in this one. No, but people love it when I question things and, and we have a yeah, big discussion true. on it because they like us understanding what's actually going on. So I do like the technology sector, but it's okay. just a bit too early. It is. I agree with you. So communication services, mm -hmm. we're down 17% on that one. So that's a mix of, you know, all the different um, Telstra's involved so in that So this is one. technically not crashed. It's not crashed technically, but um, it's a decline. I mean, mm. it's a downtrend. That's what we look at. Is it a trend or not? And then we can see it is a downtrend. Um, healthcare, mm. um, this is Telstra all over, sideways. Was that a crash? Well, Telstra you know. is not healthcare. Sorry, I said healthcare. You said, then you said Telstra. Oh, gosh, I'm losing it. <laughs> um, healthcare, so CSL. Um, is more or less sideways, isn't it? This is just CSL all over yeah. in terms of the chart because of its market capitalisation. Um, if you look at that last fall, that looks like a sort of a crash happening, but it hasn't it's a continued. It capitulation, wasn't it, really? It was. It was just a really, I don't know what was happening there, but it was a really swift fall. Mm -hmm. Now we've seen a bit of a sideways move. People have tried to get in too early and there is a risk that it could fall again. Yeah, and this is what I've been saying for the last month or so with our market sort of finding some support and starting to move is, is don't move early right now. Yeah. It's still, the jury's still out of direction and it really mm. is. We don't know whether the red light's still there looking at us or there's about, you know, we've got to count from the red light to the green light is three seconds. How long? This could be, we yeah. might be in the three seconds there. Very good. All right, let's mm. have a look at the next one. So yeah. consumer staples. Yep. So Woolworths, Coles. Mm. Um, we've got all of this consolidation mm -hmm. that's happened here. Um, Woolies had a big sell-off. Coles has had a reasonable sell-off. If we see the, the, the sector take off above this high, what would you say about the sector? I'd say it's taken off. It's I think bullish it's good. again. I think we're going to be surprised by our retail sector. Mm -hmm. by, I mean, obviously Coles and Woolies, you'd think they're consistent, you know, because obviously people still need to eat. Mm. But then you've got, you know, like, you know, you've got your, your Meyer and your other retailers. Are you talking retailers. about consumer discretionary? And I'm talking about that as well. I think we're going to be, be surprised in consumer staples and in consumer discretionary mm. about some of the reports about what we're actually seeing. And, and I think there's a lot of talk of doom and gloom around the marketplace, but that, like Buffett says, that's the time. Yeah. That is the time where you get ready and you start taking the opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, and I've been chatting to a, quite a few property experts in Australia over the last couple of weeks because I we're interviewing, interviewing them for our new Talking Wealth show that we're going to launch soon, um, which we'll tell you about later on. Um, it's, don't tell. Um, but, I, but they're all saying, hey, even though there's doom and gloom around the property market and people saying it's coming off and interest rates are rising, there are some really still good, great opportunities mm. if you know where to look for them. And well, it's they're, the same they're here. talking about a 15% decline in property at the moment. Yeah. Well, what happened when they called it before? Talk and do. Yeah, I don't, they called it 20% fall and, they, and it happen. came back 10%. Yeah. So if they're calling 15, 15 it means it'll go seven back and 7 and a half. And a half. <laughs> I mean, there'll probably be pockets where you're going to see that, mm. and we are seeing some pockets, but all of it, I mean, I'm talking of a raw, wide variety mm. of experts on property, um, and they're all still prod. I won't say they're excited, if you know what I mean, but they're realistic right now. Um, you know, and I think they, they're still saying the market is still good and there's some really good pockets in the marketplace. Okay. But we digress from that. But I, what I, my point was, I think we're going to get ex, we're going to get some surprises on consumer staples and discretionary with some yeah. of the results we're going to see. Okay. All right. And we've yep. got materials as well as another one. So we like materials. We like financials as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, materials has held up well. 
just right now, um, we've seen the changeover with BHP and as a whole corporate action. Yeah. So, you know, the dust hasn't really settled on that yet. No. So it's important just to watch that right now. We've had a few corporate actions lately, haven't we? But they're, they look, they're still really good shares. Mm. BHP, Rio and FMG. We're probably going to start, still right see time. a lot more takeovers and mergers and acquisitions and all sorts of things going on, I think, over the next 12 months or more because there is opportunity right around in different sectors. And we've seen a few, like obviously the mm. BHP Woodside. There was another one I talked about the other day when somebody asked me on the Monday show, um, and I can't remember the name of a stock that had a split, mm -hmm. that um, it dropped out of bed on Friday because it split out its company, and I can't remember the name of it. It's a lower cap company. Mm. It's one we don't look at at the moment. Well, AGL's not going mm. to demerge, and I'm yeah. really glad about mm -hmm. that. I that's think a, good that's one. a good move. Mm. Yeah, so we're obviously we're talking about the opportunities here. So what is your preferred sector for the second half of the year, and what's the second preferred sector? Look, I'd have to say mm. that given the fall, I'd have to say Infotech I'm watching because it's a 45% yep. fall. Yep. Um, so there's some real opportunity in there. I, I also like consumer discretionary as well. Yep. Mm. So they're the two picks, yeah? Any stocks in those sectors you like to look at? Um, look, at the I'm moment... Pushing. Yeah, look, at the moment, um, I like Harvey Norman and JB Hi-Fi, but just not now. The charts mm. look a bit of a mess at the moment in the short term. I was so disappointed. I went to JB Hi-Fi a week ago to buy some CDs, and their CD section is so small nowadays. Really? I used to love going into them and just looking through all the CDs and coming out with a whole pile of them. Showing your my, age? It's taken up my shopping experience because now it's all on iTunes and you just go blur and like, what do you got? I like looking, I'm looking on reading the covers and pulling the stuff out. And, and you said you don't like to shop. I, well, no, that's music. I used to go in the You're old record shop shopper. and flick through the records. You're probably I too know young the for truth. that one pull it all out so anyway all, all right well that is our take for tonight on the um, what are we talking about i've just forgotten I've, We're I've, looking at the i'm sectors. so much into the record shop everything else but <laughs> cool that is our take etc so on what we're thinking uh, is going to be good sectors for the next year but before we get into our next email i do hope you have your phone ready and have been patiently waiting for the opportunity to call into the show and ask Janine and I your most burning question. Now's the time to get dialing. The number you need to dial is 03 for Melbourne, 929 That is 03 So get dialing now. Janine's excited. While you call us, we will get into answering the next question. So call now. Now we have a question from Sanjay who says, Hi guys, I want to pick your brains on Flight Centre and its prospects. Lately the shine seems to have been lost. What is the 12 month view and the long term view? Regards, Sanjay. Ooh, interesting. Or Sanjay. Should I say Sanjay? Sanjay. Or Sanjay. 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 Okay. All right, let's have a look at Flight yeah. Centre then, shall we? Uh, you can see on the left hand side I've got the monthly chart so we've got a bird's eye view of what this stock looks like and it is a volatile one. Mm -hmm. When it gets sold off, boy, does it get sold off It does. Uh, really quick. So, you know, I mean, right now it looks like it's really gradually trending back up in the right direction. Although uh, overall it's still a sideways action that we're seeing. And if we if we see this stock trade back below the 13th of May, I'd be quite concerned about it. It needs to really get above this high on the 6th of May to show that it's actually going to move on again. So, you know, that's really my take on it. It's quite simple. Um, I don't dislike the stock at the moment. I'm not hugely excited about it either, but I, I still think that there's upside potential in there if it makes that move I mentioned. Well, he's asking our 12 month view and our long term view. And I mean, mm. really, it's not possible to answer, really, is it? Well, right there's now, so everything's in flux. Mm. Yeah, I mean, especially the travel sector it's very much in flux still i mean i know they're launching these new massive big cruise ships but i don't think i'm going to get on one of those in a long time oh i'd love to go on that uh, now right now if if you gave me a pass you'd get on one <laughs> i'd love to i'm sure you're going to take a if one of your suitcases will be filled with masks <laughs> and the other one will be with hand sanitizer <laughs> and a bikini that'll be about it you know me so well do you think i'm going to have a bikini in there no, but yeah. they'll have the masks and the sanitizers. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right. But it is. It's, it's so, so volatile, that pr uh, travel sector at the moment, especially international travel. Okay. You know, um, there's not a lot happening, I don't think. So I don't think it's going to be big in the next 12 months. But I do like the stock. <laughs> All right. So, okay, okay, I've made you laugh now oh. for the night, so you feel good. 
Before we get into the next question, if you are listening to this YouTube live stream as a podcast, then we would love your help. And that means giving us a five star rating and writing a nice review. Now let's share the next question, which is from Ben. Hi, Dale and Janine. Thanks for all the great content. It's refreshing to hear a balanced and conservative take on share trading as opposed to all the noise and clickbait out there. Having analysed the top 50 ASX stocks on the weekly chart, I found only two that look to have definitely broken up from a confirmed downtrend and are showing, to me at least, a clear buy signal. The stocks are Transurban and Horizon Holdings, of which I believe AZJ is the better buy. I'm looking at buying the stock medium term. History suggests it's a stock to trend up well for 12 to 18 months before falling off a cliff. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on AZJ's medium term prospects. Cheers, Ben. Really good question. I love how he posed his question. That's really good. Mm. That's really good. You stopped laughing now. You're okay? I'm still trying to get my breath back. <laughs> okay, cool. So how okay. about we get in an AZJ for Ben? All right. Look, it looks lovely. And I think I agree. You know, it's it's a... The thing with this stock is it's a really volatile mm -hmm. stock. And like it you is. said, it does rise and then it falls off a cliff. And you don't know how long it's actually going to rise for because it's not always consistent. Um, you know, you get a, the, we had a decent run here from this low in mm -hmm. 2012, but then it fell away. And then look at this, a huge rise through that high, but it well, didn't last as long as the previous run. And then it just got sold off. You would have got really got wiped out yep. big time there. It took off again, uh, really volatile, significant pullbacks when it does rise. Just to give you an idea, let's have a look. We can see that after the rise there, um, mm. you know, there's a 20% fall. So from this low in February 2016, 20% fall just in a month and a half, really, um, which is quite huge in explaining the sort of volatility. Now, to give you an even better understanding of volatility, if we look at what happened during this sell-off here, um, it's a 44% sell-off. Now, that, that was actually happening, started before COVID mm. actually was announced. So that actually occurred in line with what happened with COVID, but was, the fall had already begun. And then it kept falling. So we have seen uh, two, three, four, five, what, six months up so far, which is really nice. I'd say that very soon it's due for a bit of a pullback, given how many months it's been going up now. Well, this bit, I mean, this whole thing that you've been talking about here, it, it begs the question, is this a trading stock or an investing stock? This is a trading stock. Okay, so if it's a trading stock, that means investors shouldn't be in it, mm. pretty much. Because how do you, I mean, look, looking at the chart, this oh. thing's been going sideways. You, you can know, bought 10 or 12 years ago. Yeah, at the well, same if price. you bought the stock in July 2013, you'd be in a loss. You'd be in a loss at the moment. This is a similar thing. We talked about NAB. You know, people think mm. NAB was a good in, in, uh, stock. So if you were to trade this stock. Same sort of thing, big yeah, sideways moves. Absolutely, and, mm. and NAB's very much like that. But if you were to trade this stock, how do you get out of it? Well, that would be the question I would answer before I even bought into it. Yeah. How do I get out of it? How do you make what? sure that your money's safe? Mm. What's the point in sitting in there? It might trend well for a while, but then you've lost a lot in a few mm. weeks. I've had stocks that mm. I've done in the past where they every single time they make this beautiful trend line crossing go up 100%, mm. but then they fall off a cliff. Yep. And I've gone next because it's just how do you pick mm -hmm. the time where it's going to turn around? Do you just jump out early? Do you guess? And to me, there are far easier stocks to trade than this sort of stock at the moment. Okay. So, you know, his other share that yeah. he had was Transurban. Yeah. I personally think that Trans Transurban's, Transurban's a, a nicer stock. stock. Okay. Mm. There you go. So that's your opinion. Transurban's a nicer stock. Right now, AZJ is moving up and it has been moving up for a little bit since that low there back in December. So it has been moving up for the past six months. So is it going to continue moving up? Mm, might. But then again, you might be buy, buying in just before it turns the, turns the, the, the yeah, corner. Yeah, it could go to 440 or around yeah. there, um, but it, it'd have to be getting close now. Yeah. Mm. Anything else you'd like to say on AZJ? No, it's good that he had those interesting stock picks. I think it was actually great that he did that research to mm. find the stocks that were actually going up. Good on you, because sometimes you can't good. see the wood for the trees, and you found that. I agree. I absolutely mm -hmm. agree on that one. So, gee, I'm agreeing with you again. Oh, something's wrong. <laughs> anyway, we do have an email now from James who says, Hi, Dale and Janine. The show has helped me stop out of two positions, one being AE Tech that I stopped out at $17.50, which today is at $15.90, and another WGX, which I stopped out at $1.85. 
which today is $1.35. So well done. So thank you very much for that. I would appreciate your thoughts on AMP. It's been in a long-term decline, but I think it's finally confirmed it's low. It has been trading sideways for approximately one year, but I think the chart for the last six months is looking pretty good relative to the market, and it just needs to break through uh, $1.22 from June 2021 to confirm the start of a longer term rise. Now, fundamentally, AMP is trying to simplify its business, and rising interest rates should help the smaller banks along. Cheers, James. Look, I think he's good done some out. really good research into this. And that's that's half your battle when you're not sure about what to buy is to it. have done that. I think that, you know, I hope that AMP are able to recover and rescue something, but it's a, all a big question mark still. And if you talk to people in the industry, they're not, still not confident about AMP. Well, it's the, only thing, the only thing you can bank on with AMP is it can constantly disappoint you. And that's what it's done since it's floated on the exchange back in the late 90s. Mm. It's just constantly disappointed shareholders. And it's had some good runs in the middle, but is it going to go on a long-term run now? Because yeah, we've thought that a few times before, haven't we? We have, but is it, you know, I mean, any company yeah. is capable of a turnaround if they get the right things in place. Now, you know, they're making some big decisions. So, and I've seen them advertising, which I think is a really good thing that they're trying to attract a certain um, investor to their, their market, which is good. Mm -hmm. I think they're not, they're almost nailing it on that, just some of the ads that I've seen. So, mm. you know, is that turnaround working? Potentially, but the chart's going to tell how us that. And been I, doing, how long have they been doing? I mean, I'm trying to play devil, devil's mm. advocate here because they've been doing that. Oh, for, look, there's people in the industry that, that I've been speaking to about AMP and they're saying that, mm. no, you know, it hasn't changed from their mm. perspective. Mm. Yeah, and so right now, what is going to what is going to change the market's mind on this stock that constantly disappoints them? Mm. It's it's going to be a, a slow ride up, and yes, maybe if it gets above that one twenty two, but a slow ride up's okay. It is okay, but I would I would be very cautious of it. I mean, you... look at AGL. You mm. know, that was a real dog as well, mm. and it's actually been gradually moving back up, hasn't it? Okay, so you're more positive on AMP, and I'm still look. I'm just unreserved. talking about you know you've actually done the work and you've written mm. in on this one. And I think that, you know, if you're comfortable with that level that you've marked, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it as long as you've got a stop loss in place. That's really yeah, what's important. Absolutely. Keep mm. a stop loss. Done deal. All right. That's it for AMP. All right. Excellent. Now, our next email is from Peter. Oh, hi, guys. I've really been enjoying the show over the last couple of years. It's excellent. Well done. Thank you. Since March 2020, there have been approximately only 15 of the ASX top 100 stocks which have fallen below their respective COVID lows or troughs. In other words, around 85% of all stocks in the ASX top 100 rose, some significantly, and have stayed up since that time. With little knowledge, you could understand why many retail traders would pile their money into stocks if this type of strategic shock event or something like it happened again. Clearly picking the absolute bottom is almost impossible. However, knowing what you know, if this did happen, would you manage your money differently? Would you take more risk knowing such high percentage of stocks are likely to rise post such an event? <laughs> Regards, Peter. That's easy. No. <laughs> that's question. a great question because you don't know and that's the point, isn't it? Well, you never that's know. not unusual. If after any crash, how many stocks, if in any bull market, how many stocks are rising out of mm. the top 100? About 80%. Look, I guess I'd go back to the GFC. People yeah. thought that after that first pullback in 2008, yeah. that the market, when it started to rise, was going up again. Yep, correct. You know, and it didn't. And we told people that it wasn't going and we thought that the risk was likely to be high and it continued to fall away. Mm. So that can happen at any time. And that's what we're preparing mm. for, which is the worst case scenario, isn't it? COVID crash. Or oh, not a crash, whichever way you think about it. The mm. COVID meltdown, whatever it is, was that normal or abnormal? Completely abnormal. Has it ever happened before in history? No. Okay, so why would you change your strategy? If you go if you go through a red light and don't get hit, would you change your strategy to drive through every single red light? <laughs> You're very funny. Oh, well, no, well, you wouldn't. But that's what I'm saying is, is just because an event happened... Mm. And people jumped in because of whatever. I think you've got to, look like, with any contact. strategy, and this mm. is what we teach when you're doing analysis mm. and, and trying to find yeah. a strategy that works well on a stock, is that you have to still factor in what's happened. Correct. It's a question of, 
you know, mm. how do you actually use that information? So he's saying, would you do things differently? No, um, I wouldn't. Look, there are some things I probably would do differently, but would I pile into stocks? Um, no, not, mm. we just wouldn't do that because it's a gradual process mm. of getting into the market because you don't know, the market could have kept falling. That's the thing. It's always possible. But it's, that's the point that we make is the stock market is about probability, mm -hmm. not absolutes. Yeah. Um, you know, and we look at the probabilities and if the probability of something is high, then we don't go against that. Mm. Um, and so COVID, that low that happened, it was probable it was going to go down in a zigzag. It could have gone further. So we chose to be a bit more conservative. And I still think that was a better strategy, even mm. though in history and hindsight proved but, but it. But what's going to be better. interesting, right, is that there were, mm. if there were a lot of people who piled into stocks when the COVID meltdown but that was just hit, guessing. Yeah, and the market's gone up strongly and the mm. market does fall from here, they're probably going to come back to a neutral position. Correct. Yeah. All right, let's move on now. We do have an email from Joe, your favourite person in the whole world, Janine, who says, hello, Dale and Janine. Thanks to you and the team for the weekly show. I enjoyed listening. Could you please look at CSL? Its share price has been unsteady lately and may be going a bit sideways now. I wonder if it might be good inflation resistant stock to consider putting in a portfolio. And if it's sideways moves, might be a lull before it takes off. Thanks, Joe. Now, that's an interesting question, Joe. It is a question. Good one. She's good at writing them, think of good ones and good stocks as well. The, the point is, is it inflation resistant? Mm, don't think so. Might be. I mean, you know, it's falling, inflation's rising, but generally healthcare tend to be defensive. They do. In all sorts of conditions. So, yeah. you know, that's the first so thing to think about. So what is the chart about. telling you? Well, at the moment, it's in no man's land. As a chartist, I'd be looking at the mouse and putting my stuff on the chart. <laughs> is that a hint? It is a hint. Okay. I've been trying so, to give you big hints all night. I know. I've just been trying to be nice and let you have access to the mouse. I didn't um, want to hog well, it all night. It's called gentleman. Always gives the lady the first bit of the mouse. Right. Okay. Go. Now, I mean, at the moment, it still hasn't proven that it's going up, hmm? but it is being defensive in that it's going sideways. So that's yes. really the point. So I see where she's coming from there, but would I buy into a stock just because it's hanging there sideways? No. No. It has to actually show that it's more likely to keep going up. And we can see that there was a high here in February 2022 yep. and another one there in May 2022. So really right now, I mean, if it doesn't, if it stays below those levels, then it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere, but it's, it's nice because it hasn't had a big, big fall, even though it's been sideways and downish. It hasn't had a huge, big corrective fall. Mm. So I think it looks good. So I do. Please keep watching it, Joe. All right. Well, that is our thoughts on CSL for Joe. And, and thank you for sending the email in. But now I think, Janine, I know we've had a few of our viewers do what you asked them to do and gave us feedback on how they're doing. And I must say, we got really some really great stories. So thank you to everyone who either commented below in the comment section on YouTube or took the time to email us. We really do appreciate your feedback on that. Yeah, it's really nice reading how you're using these recordings that we do. But I would like to say that we would love to hear from you more. Um, if it, it really helps us to help you if you can do that. So as you sit there watching the show, think about how you're using what we're sharing and then let's put that together. Put some comments below and let the team know how much you enjoy the show. So please reach out to us and share your experience. If you're listening to us on a podcast, and we know many of you do, then thanks to those who have given us a five-star rating and review. If you're listening right now and have done so, please leave a five-star review on whichever podcasting app you may happen to be listening on. Now, if you have enjoyed tonight's show, give the team a big thumbs up. That means click the like button underneath our video to let us know that you really enjoyed the show tonight. If you want us to answer your questions, then watch our show next Tuesday between 7 and 8 p.m. Pick up the phone and give us a call as we'd love to chat with you. If you're not able to watch live, you can email your question ahead of the show. You do this by sending your email to info at wealthwithin.com.au and remember to include Wealth Within Live in the subject line. We really appreciate your support to this show, yours by subscribing, or you can show your support by subscribing to the channel and hitting that subscribe button now. Well, that is it for tonight's show. We do hope you enjoyed what we've presented tonight. We've so enjoyed receiving all of your emails and thank those who called into the show. We love the opportunity to chat with you personally. As always, thank you for joining us and we do hope you have a fantastic week. But for now, goodbye, good luck and good trading. Bye for now.